reporting. All right, welcome uh, students to Evidence-Based Practice with Children and Adolescents 571. I'm here today with Ricky Harris, who's the Executive Director of Tennessee Voices for Children, which is a statewide nonprofit in Tennessee that is part of the National Network of the Federation of Families for Children's Mental Health. And she's gonna spend a few minutes today uh, talking to us about um, the importance of the family-driven movement and uh, provide an, an introduction for you for the documentary that they sponsored called Hear Our Voices. So Ricky, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, perfect. Well, I appreciate the opportunity um, to share some of this with university students and it certainly is something that we feel is important um, as we build the workforce for our future to serve children and families. So I get goosebumps just thinking about um, what that means. But I'll tell you a little bit about Tennessee Voices for Children first, and then we can talk about the video. Um, Tennessee Voices for Children is a statewide organization that was formed about 30 years ago by Tipper Gore. And the reason it came about was a response to family needs who had children with mental health illnesses and were receiving some consequences in school and not understanding um, parents and school workers or teachers or principals not understanding how to make this work in the classroom, how to help the child get their academic needs met. So that was the sort of the initial formation of the organization and it grew into an advocacy organization focused on um, providing families the strength and empowerment to use their voice in their treatment and in the systems in which they're involved to um, ensure their needs are met and ensure that the goals of their family and their individual ch children's goals were um, were met in the best way possible and and in a collaborative way so we grew into um, an organization that serves the entire state now, and the, the backbone of our organization is really uh, based on the fact that we provide parents with peer support. And what that means is parents who work at Tennessee Voices for Children have children with mental illness, and they are providing support and service to other parents who have children with mental illness. So that's a very um, specific and unique situation because we believe in the power of a peer. We believe that a peer can really um, help you see a problem in a different way. They can help you see a need in a different way. And just identifying with someone we know takes lots of stress and strain off of a person when you, I mean, just think about having your own like issues. If you know there's somebody else who went through that, it's a little easier to tolerate the, the, the difficulty of the situation because you can lean on someone else and say, what was it like for you? What did you experience? What did you deal with? How did you deal with it? So that's sort of the, the heart and soul of what we want to be able to do is give parents that support to reduce the stress and strain of raising a child with complex mental health needs. So that's sort of the, the Tennessee Voices for Children mission and our, our advocacy work built there. And of course, we grew into lots of different programs that support family voice, support youth voice, um, focus on how to bring youth and families to the forefront of their treatment. So giving them um, the words to say in a meeting at the school when they're talking about their children's mental health needs or giving them the, the, the words and the courage to say to a doctor when he's prescribing a treatment that they don't feel like really fits their family life and how to get what they need out of that. So that's, that's a little bit of the background for Tennessee Voices. Great, great. That that sounds fabulous. So can you talk a little bit about the um, the family driven movement um, as it, you know, sort of, you know, grew out of um, a real grassroots advocacy effort um, at the national level and sort of spread um, across the states. And um, we have students that are going to be viewing this from um, all over the country and all over the, the world, even a little bit, and just trying to put that in perspective um, for folks that are um, outside of Tennessee as well. Yes. So thank you for mentioning you have people from all over the state. So I'll apologize now for my very Southern accent <laughs> <laughs> to all the people listening who um, aren't from the South. But uh, yes, so we are part of 
the National Federation of Families for Children's Mental Health, and that was an organization started by and run by parents who have children with mental illness and understanding some of the needs I described earlier that families have when facing mul multiple and complex system involvement. Um, so it could be juvenile justice involvement, academic involvement, um, treatment providers, a number of ways that systems get involved with children and their families. And so this movement was started to um, bring about chapters across each and every state that would represent parents' voice and parents' and youth's needs. Um, one of the things I think about so much that makes sense to me when we talk about Federation of Families and the movement that was started, uh, I think is most explainable in wraparound language. So the Federation, I think, really recognized that no one system can, can treat or fix a child's um, mental health needs. But several systems coordinating and collaborating together, wrapping themselves around the child and the family can in fact bring about very positive results for, uh, and hopefully preempt some long-term effects for a child and their family. So it really was a movement to, um, to bring systems together and to remind the systems that are at play for each child that it is the family and the child that should be in the center of that system and that the systems that are involved should be wrapped around and supportive in nature um, and not siloed and that works best for the family. So we're very proud to be part of the Federation of Families and a chapter here in Tennessee who participates on a national scale with lots of other um, chapters across the country who have ideas, who have made big, you know, strides or maybe taken on big movements. Um, and one of those that I think is important to mention about system of care and some of the things we've been able to do is here in Tennessee is make what we call family support specialists, which are the peer provider to the parent, make that a billable service for health care. So people with, um, you know, Medicaid, children with Medicaid, can have the service paid for as part of their um, complete package, treatment package, which I think is just a huge um, point of success for us because it says that our state is listening to parents' needs and they're willing to invest in having um, parent advocates to reduce the strain of the parent in helping a child because we know the parent impact is so critical to the child's overall health. I, I think that's great. Thank you for that that further uh, explanation about the movement. Um, one of the things just in my experience in working in Tennessee with the system of care movement and definitely in partnership with your uh, organization over many, many years is uh, one of the things that just stuck with me and doesn't really leave um, that I think is really relevant and important for future uh, social work clinicians is that when you're working with families, uh, you're working with parents and caregivers of children with mental illness, there is no one who is more of an expert um, on that child and, you know, on that child's needs than the parent or the caregiver. There's nobody that spends more time. There's nobody that has seen the child at their best and at their worst. Yeah. Um, and so it's so critical that, as you were saying, that that voice is really at the, the forefront of any kind of um, behavioral health treatment uh, for that child. And um, and really understanding, and, and as social, social workers, we definitely uh, always uh, do our best to meet our clients where they are. And I think that um, understanding um, that parents are the expert and meeting them as an expert, you know, because clinical social workers are experts in everything that they've been um, trained on and everything that they've been uh, educated on. And parents are really experts um, on their own children, on their individual child. And so that level of partnership and working together, I think is uh, really exciting. And to have that orientation going in, um, as going into the, the social work field, I think is, uh, is really, really exciting. So I'm very happy to, to share all of this uh, great information with our students. And so I think finally, if you could just tell us a little bit about uh, the documentary film itself and kind of uh, what the motivation was around it. Um, I certainly have seen it many, many times and love it, which is why I'm integra integrating it into the curriculum here at UT. Um, but if you could kind of give us an overview, that would be, that would be great. Okay, so um, the former executive director who worked at Tennessee Voices for 18 years had a vision of um, 
well, a couple of things. One, reducing stigma around mental health. And that, that's something that I think we're always going to be working on. I mean, I, I can say I see it getting better, but I think we have a long road to, to the point where people really embrace um, mental health in the same way they embrace physical health. So that was the first vision. And the second vision was to bring awareness about what system of care means, wraparound means, just a definition, but a picture of what that's like in a family, how that plays out in real life. So I think it's really relevant to um, students who will be entering the field to understand that whenever you work with families and you bring your expertise as a social worker or, or, or whatever capacity you may serve in mental health, um, you also have to, just like you said, have to come to understanding of um, collaboration, coordination of service, and the importance of listening to the family talk about the needs, but talk about the goals. So you can't develop, you know, this great plan for success for a family unless you know how they define success. And so this was to really show um, six different families or youth who define success in different ways, who um, saw their needs in different ways, and who were able to document their own struggle through um, treatment and family life and all, all the things that make it complex. Um, but then to show that when people worked in a coordinated way, when Department of Children's Services and advocacy organizations and mental health providers actually started talking to one another, things got better for the youth or things got better for the family because the support was strong and the, the ability to thrive in a supportive environment is so much greater than in a siloed environment. So that was sort of the motivation about the video. Uh, you'll definitely see some hard things. I mean, you'll, you'll hear stories that are disturbing, that are difficult, that are sad, but you'll also see stories of hope of people who embraced the supportive approach and who um, were able to really take that um, support and turn it into something very successful. And a lot of that has to do with um, empowerment and um, you know relationship building and seeing things, uh, seeing themselves as their own advocate. And I think when you when you watch the film and you see each, whether it's the youth or the parent, you see each storyline. Uh, start to begin to advocate for self and find that strength within to say, yeah, this is me. I, I struggle with mental health or yes, this is us. We're a family that struggles with a child with mental health. Um, the walls kind of fell down and they were able to find their way through that and, and build a story that really is at the end, you'll, you'll see very beautiful, um, but, but maybe not in you or I, uh, in our eyes, perfect. So um, it, it's, it's emotional, um, but it's exciting. And uh, lastly, I would say that the other thing about the film, we have used the film in so many different settings now. So, of course, we envisioned mental health providers, right, watching the film, uh, people who care about children's mental health watching the film. But what it has done is expanded itself into um, – you know, university settings or classroom settings at high school to talk about bullying issues or, you know, just stuff we never imagined um, where people, teachers, uh, department of children's workers, wanted to know what does a coordinated system look like? What does wraparound really mean? And so it it went out our mental health bubble, and that is exactly what we needed it to do. Mm -hmm. Very excited, and we've been very pleased, and we know we only have a little while where everybody uh, points out the, uh, you know, hatedness of the film. So we're trying to use it as much as we possibly can um, to really bring, a, bring forth that full awareness. Mm -hmm. Well, it really is an exceptional effort um, that your organization was able to, to put forth. And um, there's definitely a lot of um, he heavy hitters in, in the film in terms of um, policy at the state level, at the national level. And, um, you know, hearing that expert voice uh, from the families and the, the, the children and adolescents themselves, they're just, they're still 
such an inspiration to me uh, personally and professionally. And um, I'm just really excited to be able to share this uh, film with our students. And thank you very, very much uh, for allowing us the opportunity to, uh, to view this. I think it's going to be a, a great um, help and benefit to our students. So I really pre appreciate all your uh, help and effort to us. Well, thank you for bringing this uh, level of awareness to students. Great.